Welcome to Lyons Township High School Physics. Uh, today we got an example involving RC circuits, resistive capacitive circuits. And um, we have a, a circuit and what I would suggest right now is you pause the video briefly and go ahead and copy this diagram down. Um, once you're back off the pause, I'll, I'll mention a couple things about it. All right, have you paused yet? Pause it, copy it down. All right, here we go. Um, we got a battery, 40 volts, or e e an EMF source. We got um, a resistor here, a resistor here, and a capacitor there. And um, what we're going to do, uh, this, this problem has two parts. The first part's the long part. The second part's really short. Um, the first part is we're going to close this switch. And what I want, it, want us to figure out is the following. Uh, we're going to find all three currents. Uh, at the moment you close the switch, after a long, long time, and as functions of time. And we're also going to find the charge on the capacitor after a long, long time, and then as a function of time. And uh, this does involve a little bit of trickery, okay? Um, and, and I'll come to that. Well, when we get to that, you'll kind of, hopefully, you'll understand. So, okay. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll actually start with currents. Um, and um, when you first close the switch, as discussed in class, the capacitor basically behaves like a wire. In other words, if you pretend it's positive charges moving, positive charges come flowing through the battery this way. Now again, we all know it's really negative charge, but we'll pretend it's positive. Positive charge comes flowing this way, the posits there, bumps positives off there, and they keep going around as if nothing happened. Okay? Now, once your capacitor begins to charge up, well, then that current dies off. But at first, it's, the capacitor behaves like a wire. Okay? Since this capacitor behaves like a wire at first, this current's going to be zero. Because if you're Joe electron or Joe positive charge, when you get to this intersection, if you've got a choice between no resistance and resistance, you're picking no resistance. So when you first close the switch, the circuit basically is just this. It's just a simple RC circuit. The capacitor is behaving like a wire, so basically you have an 8 ohm resistor in line with the 40 volt battery. Current's going to be 5 amps. Okay, so I'll write that down. So um, we'll look at um, each current. Uh, we'll look at I sub C, that's the current going through the capacitor. We'll look at I sub R, that's the current going through that resistor. And then the current I sub B, which is the current going through the battery. And then we'll do time is 0 and time approaches infinity. So we just said at zero seconds, this guy, and therefore that guy is going to be 5 amps. They're both going to be 40 over 8, which is 5 amps. Um, and then the battery will be 5 amps because IR is 0. Okay. Oh, and there you go. IR is 0 at the beginning. Okay. Because again, when a current gets to here, it's got a choice. No resistance, resistance. It's taking no resistance. Um, after a long, long time. Well, once the capacitor is fully charged up, it stops allowing current through it. Charges stop depositing on the top plate. They stop leaving the, the bottom plate. So now current's just going to flow around the circuit like this. Well, you have a voltage of 40 volts, and you have a total series resistance of 20 ohms. Your current's going to be 2. So after a long time, the capacitor current will be 0. The current going through the resistor and the battery will simply be, and I'll write it down here, it's 40 over 8 plus 12, which is simply 2 amps, and this will be 2 amps. So those are our currents um, at the beginning when you first close the switch and after a long, long time. Okay? We'll also go ahead and find the charge on the capacitor after a long, long time. Now, at, at 0 seconds, it's 0. There's no charge on it. Um, after a long, long time, well, we know that Q is C times voltage. Common error here would be to take the capacitance, which is 20. Um, oh, and actually, got one value to change there. It's not supposed to be micro. It's supposed to be milli. Okay. And then, by the way, on this example, I want to deal with numbers to kind of bring things out, make it simple to see. You can do all this with variables, uh, but in, in this case, I want to go ahead and do numbers, keep it simple for you. Uh, but anyway, um, the common mistake here would be to take the capacitance, which is 20 millifarads times 40 volts. Ah, OK, so 800 uh, millicoulombs or 0.8 coulombs is what a lot of people would write here. 
but that's incorrect. The voltage of this capacitor never reaches 40 volts. Well, what does it reach? Well, that capacitor and this resistor are in parallel. They will always have the same voltage. What is the voltage across this resistor after a long, long time? Okay, well, you know the current through it is 2 amps after a long, long time. V equals IR. 2 times 12 is 24 volts. This voltage maxes out at 24 volts. So the charge here is the capacitance, which is 0 0.020. If you divide by 1,000, that's, that's how many cool or uh, farads it is, times the voltage that at the max voltage it reaches, which is 24 volts. And you get Q after a long, long time is 0.48 coulombs, or if you want to write 480 millicoulombs uh, by all means. That's the charge after a long, long time. Now, what about the currents and the charge as functions of time? Okay. Well, that gets a little tricky. Um, it's not too bad, but it's a little tricky. Okay. Um, now that we know Q max, by the way, um, I'm actually going to start with the charge on the capacitor as a function of time and work with that. All right. So um, we know that the charge starts off at zero and reaches this max value. Um, therefore, we know the function is going to look like Q is Q max times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. So we know, because that function starts off at, with, with time equals 0, that function starts at 0. And after a long, long time, that function maxes out at Q max. So I'll write that down. Um, Q as a function of time is Q max, which we know to be this, okay, times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. So the only thing you've got to figure out is tau. And here's where the little bit of trickery comes in. You've got to be real careful. What is tau? Okay, well, for a capacitive circuit, tau is equal to RC. R you have to be careful with, okay? The resistance that you use is the resistance that the capacitor sees. In other words, if the capacitor were the thing driving current in your system, what, what resistance does that capacitor see? What, what's in the capacitor's way for getting charges from one plate to the other? So imagine you're Joe Charge on this plate, and you want to get down to this plate. Well, in this case, what do you have? Well, you could go to the right and go through the 12-ohm resistor, or you could go to the left and go through the 8-ohm resistor. So you have an or. You have a choice on which path to take. An or is parallel. In other words, the 8 ohm and the 12 ohm resistor are in parallel with each other with regards to the capacitor. Okay, So that's how we're going to find our REQ. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of put REQ here just to kind of remind you of that. Okay, So we've got to do parallel resistance. So 1 over REQ is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. We'll do a little bit of math here. 1 over REQ is 1 over 12 plus 1 over 8. Common denominator is 24, so it's 2 plus 3, it's 5 24 it's. So REQ is 24 over 5, which would be 4.8. Uh, ohms. Okay. Um, now, uh, that's what goes in here. Tau would be that, and I'll leave it as 24 over 5 ohms times your capacitor, which is 0.020 of farads. And let's see, so that would be 0.004 um, times that would be 0.096, I believe. Yep. 0.096, and that units, those units, units end up being seconds. That's our tau. Now, once you've got tau, you've got Q as a function of time. So Q on that capacitor as a function of time is Q max, which is 0.48 coulombs, okay, times 1 minus E to the negative T over 0.096. Uh, that'll be in coulombs. Okay. Once you've got Q as a function of time, uh, finding the currents is relatively easy. Um, now, this is, I'm going to do this one way. There's a couple ways you could find these currents. I'm going to use the charge as a function of time and go from there. All right. So, having said that, to find the, that this is the charge on the capacitor, 
the current through the capacitor is just a derivative of this. Okay? So we know that I of the capacitor is dq dt. Okay? So for us, that would be point oh four, oh, sorry, point four eight. Point four eight times the derivative of that, which is one minus that, the derivative of that, which is negative one over point oh nine six e to the negative t over point oh nine six. All right. Uh, now, if you look. This divided by that is 5. Okay, so I sub C is 5. Okay, the negatives drop out. Um, e to the negative t over 0 0.096. Now, by the way, does that exhibit the properties that we said it should? At t equals 0, e to the 0 is 1, so current's 5. <laughs> That's what we put right here. And after a long, long time, the current's supposed to be 0. Well, e to the negative big number is basically 0. So 0 times 5 is 0. So that does actually follow our rules. Now, what about the, current, the other two currents, the current through the resistor and the current through the battery? Okay. Well, the current through the resistor, um, I sub r, Okay. the way I'm going to find that is take uh, the voltage over resistance, and this is over R2, okay? So um, voltage, well, here's, and again, a little bit of thought here. I know that this voltage and that voltage have to be the same, okay? So it, I'm going to look at this voltage as a function of time. Well, basically, to find that voltage as a function of time, I've got to take charge as a function of time divided by C. V is Q over C. So. <laughs> This becomes Q as a function of time over R2C. Okay? That'll be the current as a function of time through that resistor. So um, we know the current or the charge as a function of time was 0.48 times 1 minus E to the negative T over 0.096. All right. All over R2, which is 12, okay, times the capacitance, which is 0.02. Okay? Um, if you do that, you find I sub R to be, um, uh, let's see, you end up with, if you do the math, uh, 2. So this divided by that, divided by, you know, this divided by that times that is 2. And you get 1 minus E to the negative T over 0 0.096. That's the current through the resistor as a function of time. Now, having said all that, uh, does that exhibit the properties we, we thought it should? So we need something that starts off at 0 and maxes out at 2. Well, when time equals 0, e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. i starts off at 0. Uh, when you got e to the negative infinity, that's 0. Uh, you got 2 times 1 is 1, or 2. So ir ends up being 2. Uh, the battery voltage, uh, that's the easy one. Um, or the battery current, I should say, um, that current has to be this plus that. If you use uh, Kirchhoff's junction rule there, the current in equals the current out. So I battery, I'll do this over here, I battery is simply IC plus IR. Okay? And um, if you do that, you do the math, um, if you add this plus this, you end up with uh, I sub B is 2 plus 3e to the negative t over 0 0.096. So that's the current through the battery as a function of time. Um, you know, basically, how am I doing that? You got 5e's minus 2e's. That's your 3e's. Okay? And then you got that, this 2 hanging out front. There's your 2. Okay? Now, having said that, what does this go from? Well, at t, t equals 0, e to the 0 is 1. That's 2 plus 3 is 5. So the current should start off being 5. After a long, long time, e to the negative infinity is 0. That goes away. Your, your final current should be 2. Starts off 5, ends up 2. So we're on, we're on track here. Okay. Uh, the last thing I'll do is um, 
we're going to graph these. And, and on, the, on the AP exam, they often ask you to graph stuff as functions of time. So important numbers for current, and we're going to graph all three currents as functions of time on the same graph. The three important numbers here are, and by the way, if you were doing this and couldn't get all the stuff as a function of time, you can get pretty darn close to a cor correct graph with just this stuff here. The important numbers are 0, 5, and 2. Okay, so let's write those down. Current in amps as a function of time in seconds, okay, 0, 2, 5. We'll draw some horizontal asymptotes there, okay. Um, so your, your, your current through the resistor, we'll start with that one. That starts off being 0 and maxes out at 2. So it's going to approach 2. That's I through the resistor. Okay. Um, the current uh, in your capacitor or running through your capacitor starts off at 5 and tends to 0. So it's going to look something like this. That's I sub C. I sub B starts off at um, 5 and tends to 2. So it looks like this. That's the current through the battery. Notice that whenever you add, and the colors worked out here, whenever you add the red plus the blue, you get the purple, right? Because IC plus IR always equals IB. So it doesn't matter what, what time you look at, the blue plus the red is going to equal the purple. Okay? Now what about discharging? Okay, so let's kind of go back here. So let's say, let's say you close that switch. You have to close for a long, long time. Everything's steady state now. Our current going around here is 2 amps. That thing's fully charged, 0.48 coulombs. And then I open the switch. Uh, we're going to find uh, charge and, and current through the capacitor as functions of time. This, thankfully, is really short and really easy, okay? So um, all I need is probably about this much space, okay? Um, so we know that charge is going to be Q naught. Now here, it's going to be not 1 minus E, but E. Um, because the charge is going to start off max value 0.48 coulombs, and it's going to drain to 0, okay? So we got E to the negative t over tau. Well, the only issue here is tau is going to change. Your resistance changes because now when you open that switch, charge is going to flow off this plate. It can't go that way because that switch is open. It can only go this way. So basically you have a really simple RC circuit, uh, the resistance being 12 ohms. So your tau, which is RC, is simply 12 times 0.02 which is 0.24 uh, seconds. So it's, it's much quicker than it was before. Um, or to get back, it's slower than it was before. Uh, so Q, as a function of time, will be 0.48, that's our Q naught, E to the negative T over 0.24 seconds. So there's charge as a function of time, leaving our capacitor. Uh, for current, um, I'm going to actually do this two ways, and I still only think I'm going to need this much room. Okay, so current, we know the function for that is I max, the starting current, um, times E to the negative T over tau. Well, I got tau now, it's at 0.24 seconds. Um, what's I max? Well, here you got to do a little thought. Okay, when this thing was fully charged, prior we determined its voltage was 24 volts. We got a resistance of 12 ohms. V equals IR, or more importantly, I equals V over R. 24 volts divided by 12 ohms is 2. So I max is 2 amps, and then we got E to the negative T over 0.24. Okay? That is our current as a function of time. Okay? However, some of you might be saying, hey, there's another way to do this. If you've got charge as a function of time, how do you find current? You take the derivative. So if I take the derivative, of this, I should get this. Let's try it out. Um, I is dq dt, which is 0.48 times uh, the derivative of this, which is negative 1 over 0.24 e to 
e to the negative t over 0.24. And if you do this, you get i as a function of time is, so that's 2. But you get a negative 2 e to the negative t over 0.24. Okay. So you get the same answer, except it's negative. That's telling you something. Okay, what is that telling us? Well, when you were charging this guy up, and it's again pretending it's positive charge moving, positive charge is flowing down onto this top plate, filling the top plate up, driving positives off the bottom plate, leaving that bottom plate negative. Okay? So we end up with plus plus and then minus minus down there. Well, when you open the switch, and again, pretending that the positives do the moving, they're going to fly up off of here and go this way, meaning that current is now going the opposite way than it was when the capacitor was charging. That's evidenced by the negative sign. That's telling you that, hey man, that current is going the opposite way of when the capacitor was charging. So that's an example of an a, a RC circuit with more than one branch. And we found the current and charge as functions of time in all parts of the circuit. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.